Designing a database schema for a new project is one of the first crucial steps you need to do when starting to work on a new application. Choosing the right database model, designing how the data will be stored and accessed can seriously impact the future of our application. And in this video, I'm gonna start from an idea and turn that into a robust database schema design with the process called normalization, which consists of a few simple steps. Define the entities and their attributes, define the relationships of the entities and do any adjustments at the end. Now, of course, this is a bit exaggerated because when we start to work on application, we don't actually know all of the different data we're going to be storing and how it's going to be accessed. There's a statistic somewhere that most startups pivot from the initial idea, which goes to show that we don't actually know the data we're going to be storing, how it's going to be accessed and what's the best way to map all the relationship between our entities and our database. But either way, going through this exercise is going to help you to understand what are some of the ways you need to think about when you start to design a database. So the very first step we need to do is describe our idea in a few simple sentences. We need to describe what our application is going to do, what are some of the entities it's going to have, and then we can go from there. So the description of my project is, I want to build a web application that has meals, which consists of ingredients, and each ingredient has their macros like calories and protein and stuff like that. And I want to be able to adjust the amounts of the ingredients for each meal. And each of the meals are gonna be assigned to different days of the week. And at the end, I want to be able to produce a grocery list that I can extract it and tick off any of the items that I bought from the list. Perfect, so now we have our description and we can go through our description and see what, what are some of our entities. And this is the second step. We need to define our entities for the database. So in here we can look for nouns and basically those will be our entities or at least starting with. We can see that my app needs to have meals and they will be for each day of the week. So the day and we have ingredients and that's basically the three big entities that I can see from my description. I wanna have meals, I wanna have ingredients and I want to have days. So I'm using a racer here by the way which has a nice tool for, for database schema design. And we can change the entity relationships here in the, as code. So I'm just gonna remove all the attributes. Okay, so now that we have our entities, we can actually define the attributes for each of them. So I'm gonna start from the smallest entity, which is the ingredient. And I'm gonna have an idea of this so I can no, so I can assign this ingredient to multiple mills and just use it whenever I want. In the future, I might want to extend this, which is fine. For example, I want to add a barcode in the future so I can scan the ingredient. But for now, I'm just gonna keep it simple and think about only the description that I put in. So these are all things I'm gonna have for an ingredient. And the reason I put the brand name here because sometimes the macros differ per brand name, like chicken for one, from one brand is gonna have different macros than the chicken from a different brand. Probably not chicken, but some cooked meals maybe. Cool, now let's define our day. The day is gonna have a name, which is gonna be a string and the primary key as well. So this, I don't really care about the date. I just care about the day of the week. So this is gonna be Monday or Tuesday or whatever. Can actually rename this day of the week day of week and the day will have meals i'm just gonna add this here and then we'll this will be type of meals and but we'll come back to this again now let's go to the meals i'm also going to define an idea here which is going to be the primary key for this table so these are my three entities and all of their attributes so now let's think about the relationships for each of these. If we go back to the description, it says that a web app to create meals for each day of the week. So that's the first relationship. We have a day and each of the days is gonna have multiple meals. When we define relationship in databases, we need to think about what type of relationship it is. We have a one-to-one, one-to-many, many-to-one or many-to-many -many relationships. And in different cases, this can differ obviously. For my case, if we think about the relationship of meals in a day of the week, one day is going to have multiple meals and one meal can be assigned to multiple days. For example, I might want to have one meal 
multiple times a week. So that means we have a many-to-many -many relationship. And when we have a many-to-many -many relationship, one of the best ways to design this is to have a separate table that's going to store the entries for that relationship. And this is going to be meals for days, or we can call it whatever one. You call it meal days or day meals. Actually, I'm going to call it day meals. So this is going to be one day, one meal, and any other information I need for that specific relationship. So I'm going to combine the meal ID and this is going to be a foreign key and then the day, which is also going to be a foreign key. And I also want to know for which day, part of the day this is, for example, breakfast or lunch or dinner. I can also add a time, but I don't really care about the time. I just want to have, to have three different parts of the day for now. So it's pretty much sums up what my relationship is going to be done from. And then we can actually define the relationship between now the new table and our two entities. So let's do that. And now we can go back to our day and actually remove the mills from here. So our day of the week is only going to consist of the name. I'm probably going to add more stuff in here in the future. But for now, let's keep it simple. So that defines the first part of our relationship and then says create meals for each other week with ingredients for each meal. So here we see that we have another relationship between the ingredients and the meals. And if we think about what type of relationship again, one ingredient can be assigned to multiple meals. I'm probably going to use salt in everything. So that's one example. And one meal can have multiple ingredients kind of definition of a meal. So we have another many-to-many -many relationship and I'm going to define a new t table for that as well. And both of these are going to be foreign keys. Foreign key basically means it's a key in another table, a, hence foreign key. It's not a primary key, but it comes from a different table. And I also want for each of the meals, um, when I'm thinking about which ingredients the meal is going to have, I'm probably going to have different amounts for different meals. For example, for one meal, I'm probably gonna use 200 grams of chicken. For another, I'm gonna use different amount. So I'm gonna have a ingredient amount. And this is gonna be a number. And I can also include here what the measurement is. It can be grams, it can be liters, depending on the ingredient. And this can also be part of the ingredient as well. But I'm gonna add it here because I think it's just gonna be simple when I have to write to this table. And this is gonna be string, it can be kilograms, milligrams, liters, cups, pounds, whatever. So that defines now another main to main relationship. Let's actually add the relationship it's here. Cool. So now we have five different tables in here and each of them are connected to each other. We have two of the tables which basically represent our relationships and then we have three entities which represent our entities for our application. And I think that sums up the relationships in my app. We'll just go over the description again. A web app to create meals for each day of the week with ingredients for each meal and adjust the amount of the ingredients per meal. And I can see the macros for the meal. Cool. The app will also be able to produce a list of ingredients needed for the week I had that I can tick off as done when I went pod. I think that sums up the relationship. And now we go on to the last step, which is adjustment. And now we can think about how our application is going to use this data and do we need to make any adjustments and change the database schema. So if we go back to the description again, I think this will work for the first part, part of my application. But the second part of the description says that the app will also be able to produce a list of all ingredients that I can tick off when bought. So this means that the in, I'm probably going to be shopping once or twice a week and I want a list of all the ingredients, for example, from Monday to Thursday. And I want to be able to tick this off when I bought them, which means I'm probably going to be buying the same ingredient multiple times a week or each, each week. So I need to store somewhere that I've bought an ingredient and I can't really add that to the ingredients because this is going to be 
reoccurring every week or whenever I go shopping. So I'm going to need a new table that's going to represent the grocery list, the items of that list, and if it's bought or not. So let's go back to my definition. I'm going to call this a grocery list. And this is going to have an ID. I basically want to de define the grocery list, which is going to have items, but I might want to expand on that in the future. I'm gonna have a name so just I can differentiate them. And then this will have items. And if we think about one, one grocery list is gonna have multiple items, but one grocery list item is only gonna belong to one grocery list. So here we have a one to many relationship. So in situations like this, we can go two ways. We can either, again, create a new table and have the grocery list ID, the ingredient ID, and when if, if it's bought or not. Or we can add all of those information in the grocery list table. And I'll show you how. So we can have ingredient ID. The entries in this table are gonna be, let's take an example, I have a grocery list and I have two items. I have chicken and rice. I go with that example because it's the simplest. Not that I'm eating only chicken and rice. So we have a chicken and like a one kilo of chicken and and 500 grams of rice for this grocery list. I might name this grocery list Monday to Tuesday or whatever and then the ID is going to be one and the rest is going to be we're going to have different rows for each ingredient. If you think about what our unique colon, columns are going to be for this entry it's gonna be the ID, the name, and the ingredient ID. So that means I'm gonna have one row per ingredient per grocery list. And the, the way I imagine the grocery is gonna be done is gonna be programmatically when I'm gonna plan the meals for all the week and then I can extract this into a new grocery list and the ID is gonna change whenever I do that. And then for each of the ingredients for each of the grocery list, I want to be able to tick them off when bought. So this is going to change whenever I tick or untick. And then I want to know the amount of the ingredient because it's going to change depending on the meals. So one week I might go shopping and I might need two kilograms of chicken. Next week I might need one kilogram of chicken. So this is going to change depending on the grocery list and the measurement as well. This is just only for being able to see when I'm looking at the list, I want to be able to see one kilogram or one pound or whatever. And when I want to get a grocery list, I'm, I'm probably going to, the way I imagine my SQL is going to be get, get all the rows where ID equals to one. And that's going to give me the grocery list with ID one and each of the rows separately. And when I get into code and actually implement this, if I need to change stuff around, that's cool because right now we're only thinking about the design of the database, but maybe I'm not thinking about how it's gonna be used. If I need to filter by anything that usually has some complexity around the application, at the moment I don't envision any filtering, but I might add that as a requirement in the future and this might change how the tables and the database is gonna look. I just finish this off and add the uh, for in the ingredient ID and the grocery list. And the type of relationship here is gonna be one ingredient is gonna belong to multiple grocery lists and one grocery list is gonna have multiple ingredients. So again, many to many relationship. Cool. So now I can see this visualized here. We have each of the tables, it's six tables now. And I'm happy with this, I think this will be I think this will serve the purpose for the current description of my app. If that changes, obviously this is going to need to change as well. And when I start implementing this, like I said, I might run into some challenges and require my database to be changed. And that's why I would always recommend, this goes beyond designing the database, but I will always recommend using some kind of package or whatever to have the schema and be able to upgrade it in the future whenever you need to. In the adjustments part, we can also think about how we're going to access our data. For example, I want to be able to see a list of meals 
can I get that with the current schema? Uh, let's just go through some of these scenarios. For example, I want to see all meals. So can I get that? Is it possible? Is it challenging? And for my use case, this is just getting all the items in one table. So yeah, that's possible. Um, I want to be able to see all ingredients. That's again, just all the rows from one table. I want to be able to see the days of the week and the meals for each day. So this now will have some joins between the tables. I want to be get I want to get the day, the days and then I want to get each of the meals for that day. That's some simple scenarios just to make sure that the database design actually works and makes sense and I can use it. And now the next video is going to be actually implementing all of this and starting the work on my project. And I'm probably going to be making more videos around that, how it's going, updates, whatever, and all the learnings I have throughout building this project. So yeah, that's been it for this video. If you have any feedback, put it down in the comments, like, subscribe, do all the things to help out with algorithm. Thank you very much for watching. Happy coding. Bye.